Okay, uh, hello world. This is classroom two, feeling God. Um, so if you watched part one, classroom one, feeling God, then um, at the end I said I still had some emotional issues to work out about feeling Mother God, as this was quite a new concept. Um, so I thought I'd got all the way and dealt with all that need to be dealt with. <laughs> but, no, there are still lots remaining, but mostly done. Mostly done. Um, I'm feeling God more and more. Um, spending more time doing it as it's enjoyable. And um, so my understanding is developing. And um, yes, I am taking stock now and then just to make sure I'm not deluding myself. So I'm doing that. But uh, things are unravelling as I would expect them to if I was right. So, so far, so good. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so I'm just going to continue from that um, and it should be a little bit clearer perhaps or just a little bit different. So, let's draw our body. Sitting there, meditating. So that would be your physical body and your spirit body, which was created by your mother and father, earthly, <laughs> earthly mother and father, but with the help of God. And as long as you're sitting there in your physical body and you're remaining awake, your spirit body is in your physical body. So when you go to sleep, that the spirit body goes off to do other things, that is you. But with you all the time is you, your you. <laughs> and I'm going to draw that sort of like a oval. Now, shape doesn't come into it on the dimension of the soul. Um, Jesus is, used to refer to this dimension as the third heaven. So when we go to sleep, we actually enter into another dimension. Our spirit body doesn't sort of get out of bed and walk downstairs. Well, it might, you can do that, but usually what you go straight into that other dimension. And then you're in that dimension. But the soul's dimension is an all-feeling dimension. Have I pressed record? <laughs> yeah. Fear, plague with fear. Um, so shape isn't really probably that important, you know. Often when I, when I've noticed, and I'll carry on, carry on. Right, <clears throat> so, you like, you know, you have a centre in your soul. So I'd put that there. About here. Oh, I bet it's focusing problem. Well, I hope you can see it okay. Um, that is your centre point of your soul. And, but, you know, your soul can be, again, dimensions. Um, your soul can be as big or as little as you want to conceive it to be. In this dimension, it can be as big as the universe or as small as a tiny little virus. G germ, proton, electron, <laughs> Higgs boson. So, yeah, and if you've, this may have happened to a lot of people, it's happened to me, sometimes I'm just sitting in a room or going to sleep at night and looking at the room, and suddenly 
it look I had this feeling like I fill the whole room like I'm really big and so basically the ceiling and everything looks really close to me and other times I have the opposite where everything looks really far away so if you like this is just you um, and your soul or just sort of imagining different things because usually we're walking around the room thinking we're the size we are right okay so our soul is a child of God and was created by God and everyone has a unique personality um, and although in reality we're just half a soul we still we still um, can operate if you like um, without the other half with us um, within our body ah I've just realized something within our when we're within our body we are we are whole um, the body does contain male and female genomes it's like 23 of each and um, so we, so when we're in the body we can we can kind of act whole and I think I've just realized that's why being in a physical body gives you this power that you don't have in the spirit world. But anyway, that's totally off track and totally different subject, but very interesting. Right, so anyway, about the half soul thing. I mean, knowing your other half, the other half of your soul can help, but just knowing that you've got another half out there is, is enough. You don't have to know their identity, I don't think. Because as soon as you know their identity, then you just want to be with them all the time. And if that's not always possible, then what are you going to do? moan about it and complain or think well you know I never met before like so I didn't have her then and so you know it's okay now sort of thing so yeah just you know you can cope <laughs> right so the soul created by God child of God there are connection points for God so how can you just take my word for that? Um, it's not going to do my back any good like this, is it? I need to. I need a tripod. Okay, sorry, I haven't got one. Right. So there's a connection point here, which, to be honest, when you're sitting in your body, you'd feel right on your asshole, <laughs> right on your asshole. Okay. That is where you feel the love of mother. The mother part of God. Pen's running out. Here is where you feel father. God is one entity that has these different aspects, male and female, as we do. Now whether my soul is male or female, this will still be the same. So, as I was explaining last time, I feel God's love enter me directly, and it may sometimes go slightly around the back part, and they can go around the edge as well. I mean, they can. There's a. There's a. a like a. And it. An exterior to your soul, 
there is a defined uh, start and end of your soul. So, but right, and if you've got the humility, which I was explaining last time, it'll go in there. So here we have these points: humility. And here, intellect. So, if your truth isn't is off, you know God won't be able to pass through your head, Father God, and to what we can call, let's say, call it the heart. Even though it's not going to be slightly over to the left as your physical heart is. And Mother God, <clears throat> and this is what I've been, this is what's been new to me. Um, again, we go all around the edge. And as I said in the last video, Mother God's love will come onto my right ear. And Father God come down to my left ear and into my eyes here. And I recently got God in my temples and as a way of just kind of giving me some peace time in a sense. God in my temples, I don't wish no one can interrupt me. Right now, so we've got here, and this is the big one for most emotions. Unfelt emotions are blockages to Mother God. And here I'd say, probably right down the bottom, affection. And so, quite often what was happening is I was starting to feel some love from Mother God. And quite quickly my testicles would tingle and I'd start to get an erection. <laughs> and... Um, quite often feeling um, love from other females it's, it's kind of comes in the same way uh, I'm still experimenting with that a bit but I had another love from a male earlier which, which was different than love from a female just brotherly sisterly love and from a female it could quite easily be taken as sexually it may even be have been sent as sexually um, but I just kind of direct everyone to God now <laughs> right so affection so you, so you're sitting on the floor you're walking along and you have you're open that's like an opening point and your affections are in order they're not carnal not towards the carnal. Think of the soul. Thinking of the soul will get you into this. There's only one half of my soul out there for me. So even if a very attractive woman knocked on my door completely naked, I should understand that, you know, it, this is something in her soul that's doing this and like that. I should, um, you know, not respond with just <laughs> grabbing her and <laughs> everything else. Now I should respond, you know, in a brotherly way, you know, what's up, basically. So, there we have perhaps a more better and complete picture. So what you want to eventually be doing, because it's so nice and it's better than sex or anything else, um, so what you want to be doing is sort of almost feeling Mother and Father God simultaneously. Now I'm kind of practicing this at the moment. It's not, you know, it's still new but it's getting better so I will get better on it. And then when you're feeling both simultaneously you kind of get this sort of presence in front of you that you can feel is God. So it's all possible, 
and you know I've noticed eating um, makes it difficult to to feel that, but it's not impossible. It's not. Um, almost none of it is impossible, but little things help. So, like today, I've what have I eaten? A plum, and I've been drinking green tea without milk. I'm not hungry. I'm fine. I can sit down and be kind of feeling this within a few minutes. Um, so, I think that was mainly it. Ah, I want to say something about feeling other spirits. Um, you seem to get a lot of spirits that kind of direct at the forehead and and they want to get in and if you and if you let them in you know you should be aware of it um, and as soon as you start to feel father and mother god you, you don't need to worry about anything because you know just direct them to Father and Mother God. <laughs> Alright, I think that'll do.